Welcome back guys to the next episode of Raceship Insights. Today we are going to talk about dynos, how they work and what is important to know and we are going to measure our 1.5 TSI on the dyno of course and 100 to 200 on the autobahn. So there are a few ways to measure the performance of an engine. Uh, of course, option one would be an engine dyno where the engine is removed out of the chassis. So you can basically measure the, the engine power itself. But the most common version, at least in the tuner world, I would say is the chassis dyno where the car is completely uh, on, on two rollers or just one roller depending on the, on the version. And that is what we are looking right now. And that is what, what we have basically, because I mean, we are measuring a lot of different cars um, over the week uh, so it's really important to get it like fixed on a dyno pretty quickly and with an engine dyno that would not be possible engine dynos you can i mean you can use an engine dyno if you just work on one engine for several weeks but for us it is really important to be able to switch the car quickly uh, and to get um, accurate results as well so and there is also uh, a third and a fourth option. Third option uh, would be a hub dyno where you have to remove the rim um, and the wheel and connect uh, the dyno to, to the hub. But that's more common in the Asian region and not so common in Europe. And the fourth option would be uh, a dyno where you plug uh, a measurement tool to the rim and measure it on the street. Um, but um, yeah, to measure the performance on the street, it's, you have to measure the car in the third or fourth gear or fifth gear, depending on the on the gearbox uh, and depending on the car, of course. And like as an example, on a C63, uh, you have to do it in the fifth or sixth gear um, and accelerate until 200 kilometers per hour. And to do that on the street, yeah, it's not that easy. And then like 99% of the countries, it's uh, illegal uh, to do that. So a chassis dyno is at least for us the best option. Um, to measure the performance uh, of the engine. Yeah, one of the most important points, of course, is to have a really, really good um, cooling system. Why? I mean, the car is standing uh, on the dyno and there is no headwind, right? If you're driving on the street, um, you have headwind, which is cooling all parts down and is getting a low intake temperature. You don't have that on the dyno, so it is really important to have a proper cooling system um, to have like the same intake temperatures um, you have on the street. Basically, we can do 30 runs back to back and always have the same uh, same conditions, which is really important to develop a perfect product. Otherwise, you would have to do like a 30 minute break between each run uh, because it's simply getting too hot. That's the reason why we invested so much money and thoughts into the cooling system to get accurate results, um, basically all the time and we are not depending on the outside conditions. So what is important to know, every chassis dyno is measuring basically wheel horsepower in the first place. So that is what you're seeing on the blue line. Blue line is the wheel horsepower. So uh, how do we know the engine power if the dyno is measuring the wheel horsepower? Well, after each run, um, the power loss is getting measured. What is power loss? A power loss is basically, yeah, self self explaining. Um, it is the loss from the engine to the wheels, so basically the drivetrain. So after each run uh, we are doing, you have to put the car into neutral. Uh, I mean, yeah, or press the clutch depending uh, how you want to do it. On a, on a manual gearbox, you are pressing the clutch. Uh, on an automatic gearbox or dual clutch, you are uh, moving the gearbox into the neutral position, and then the power loss is getting measured. So basically. Um, it is pretty simple, wheel horsepower plus drivetrain loss is engine power. You can see that um, drivetrain loss is the green line, wheel horsepower um, is the blue line and the red line is now blue plus green is the engine power uncorrected, um, which is that one. 
so what are you seeing on the top is the corrected value. Why are we correcting values? Well, it is because you want to have the same results all over the world. So that is why you're correcting the values. So it doesn't matter actually um, if you measure the car like 1000 meters above sea level or 2000 meters above sea level or at like 40 degrees intake temperatures or at like 15 degrees intake temp. Those are the values we have right now on our dyno uh, or has been measured during the run. Um, that is um, like the temperature uh, in the room. That is the temperature for the for the intake air, uh, which is getting measured, which is getting measured here. Uh, here, because the air is coming from there and there we are measuring like the intake temp. Don't, um, yeah, switch that with the uh, intake temperature uh, of the engine. That is completely different uh, value, of course. That is just uh, the uh, temperature of the air which is coming into the engine. Pressure, both pressure values and those are the values um, yeah, DIN or EVG is correcting against. So basically on all the dynos you have to the same condition, doesn't matter if it's in Dubai or, or uh, in Germany or somewhere else. Um, we are using um, EVG, but you can also use uh, DIN correction. It depends on the country you are in and like who is running the dyno basically. We are doing EVG because it's giving like more accurate results, at least in, in our opinion. Usually uh, correction um, through Dean gives you a little bit more power um, because the correction figures like ambient temperature um, and intake temperature and stuff like that is a little bit different. But you have to take care. Some engines are doing the correction itself, like Porsche as example. You don't have to correct Porsche values because Porsche is like adjusting the ECU based on temperature, height and sea level automatically. But not all cars are doing that, so that is why you are not correcting Porsche engines. I totally forgot to talk about the power figures uh, during my 15 minutes monologue about the dyno chart itself. Those are now the power figures for our 1.5 TSI, 198 horsepower and 322 newton meters of torque, which is Official figures are 150 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. So we have a really, really a big improvement all over the all over the range. And yeah, it's getting a small Polo GTI competitor because yeah, basically you are pretty close uh, in terms of performance figures compared to a stock Polo GTI. And I forgot to mention as well, what is this cable here? That is the connection to the OBD port of the car. Uh, we are getting different values there, uh, like the RPM and of course an, uh, different important values, lambda value, ignition timing uh, and so on. But of course that, that are not all values we need, so we are connecting different measurement tools um, as well to get all the ECU informations we, we need to develop a safe and proper tune. So guys, uh, I think that's it from my side. I hope I could explain you a little bit more about like how a dyno sheet or how you can read a dyno sheet and how a dyno works and what is important to know. So you're seeing now the 100 to 200 km per hour measurements from our Seat stock against GTS. So see you in the next episode of Friendship Insights.